all right everybody welcome welcome this is my oculus home we are in virtual reality there's lots of fun things to do here like shoot paper targets and another thing that i like which is called oculus medium bring up my hud here go to library all right medium by adobe let's start it up readjust my headset all right all right, we're in it to win here. We're in medium VR. A couple things to go over. First thing you'll notice is your tools. So basically, there's not a lot of instructions online. Um, so I'm going to make one because they're more like advanced, not like per se one thing. So starting off, you see you have a giant green ball here. That's because it is huge, right? Scaled. So if you use your analog stick, you can bring it down. Or if you push up, you can make it bigger. You can also press left on it and drag your remote and it'll make it bigger or smaller another thing you can see is it's kind of in the center there it's kind of weird right so if you press down on the analog you can reposition it so now it's on the tip right a little more natural if i want to come around here i can do that right oh and how i'm doing that is if you press left on the analog you'll undo see that button there and if you go to the right you'll redo all right pretty common pretty basic stuff we're all familiar with it Another thing you need to get familiar with in VR is the fact that you're in the workspace. So if you gr see these yellow triggers here, your grip, if you grab and you squeeze in, you see this square cube. Oh, what is that? That is your workspace. So let's say if I make this huge, right? And here's my box. If I start to paint, it's a little slow because it's doing it big, but if you give it a second... All right, let's redo that. I don't like the way that's taking forever. All right. Right by the wall. See how it cuts it off right at the edge? It's because you cannot go outside of that space. Cool. So, it's one thing to know. Um, so, another thing. You have a bunch of tools. A ton of tools. Clay, move, swirl, flatten, yada, yada. Ones you primarily use the most is clay, move, paint, smooth. Um, I've used these. I'm not like a huge fan of them. I'm sure there's instances when you'll need them, but for right now, no. So we're going to use clay. You also have your shortcuts down here. So here's a really cool thing that I like to start stuff with. It's called mirror. It's one of the things we learn. So we notice once I hit that, I have two balls now, and I have a plane on here. Sweet. So let's make this let's see where I'm at okay let's make it a little bigger all right so we'll bring this down look at that symmetric symmetrical symmetrical <laughs> all right so let's start making a character all right I like that as a base, so let's bring this ball up here. I want to create some sort of like character. I want to use that. Oh no. oh no, that was what I wanted. It just took a second. All right, so now we got that. Resizing. I'm going to use the move tool now move tools awesome I'm gonna want this to be a little bit bigger okay let's scale them down okay if you see that it's thinking taking a second but it's fine let's give him like these cool little like vertebrae here Okay, so we've got, I don't know, like some horns, a neck, whatever's going on here. So let's see. Let's get our move tool. I want to find, right, there. I don't like that. Let's 
go a little soft. There we go. Okay. So cool. We've got our base little character. Now another thing that's really cool. You don't. You can put clay down in white. But if you select this color wheel button right here. Boop. You get your color. Alright. So I select black. And to get rid of this menu. You just drag off. But you have multiple options. You can eyedropper on your thing. Select color. Go crazy with it. This is like opacity and tint. So now that I have black select. You'll see it around the ring. I can come in here. And let's say I want my eye to be. Boop. Ah, it's a little too much for me. Okay, not too bad. We'll just go with it for the sake. I'm going to pick a white now, and I'm going to make this smaller. Not that small. Uh, let's get closer. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, cool. So we got somewhat of a face. Well, I am not I the best at this, but you got other things you can do too. Oh, I'm in the move tool, so hit this. So you have these different things down here. These are the different shapes. So like right now I have the round brush. If I hit the pill, it'll give me just a little bit different size, which I like to use for like brows and stuff. You can bring down the strength a little bit. I'm sure. Let's put it to like 75, sure. Alright, so now oh, I'm on move tool, but I got these little pills, right? Uh, so I'm going to make it a little smaller. I'm going to readjust so I could readjust it and make it uh, to where I want it really I don't like that Okay, and it's okay if it's rough. It's not a big deal, because if you click here and you go to smooth, let's make uh, it a little bit bigger if I can. There we go. And if you can see there, So let's go to our property panel. Let's go with the steady stroke. I got the strength up, size up. Actually, I don't really like the steady stroke, so let's not do that. But you can see how it's smoothed my brow ridge out a bit. Now we got little brows and kind of a little bit of a texture here. I don't mind it. We could add more later if we want. I'm going to leave it for the sake of the video right now. So, we're still in mirror mode. Um, so it's doing everything equally, like symmetrical on each side, which is really good. Um, let's just show some more of what the tools can do, and I'll just undo them. You got twirl, which didn't seem to do anything. There it is. You gotta like set it on there. Like, it's like a mixer. I'm not a huge fan of it. I mean, it adds some cool textures. Like, I, I mean, it's okay. I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't really use it that much. You got flatten. It does exactly what you think it would. Flattens it out. Make that bigger. Take away, you know. It's pretty, pretty straightforward tool here. 
um, for me, the cut is good, but it's iffy if it works. I don't know a whole lot about it, so we'll stick away from that. Inflate does just that. If I wanted to make that bigger, <laughs> they literally just pile it up. And you can see it from this way really good. Which that honestly would have been probably a pretty good one for me to use over here. I'm like crossing them. Right? See, I can add all these cool little textures above his eyes. And it's a little hard to see that right now, but you, you see him right here. So, and when, later I'll show you how to put a light source on so you can really see shading. It kind of has one now but you can really amplify that later so for now let's go back to the move tool and let's start moving let's let's make like some horns coming out of here oh I don't like that at all okay Alright, this is looking good and creepy. I like that. So, so far, this is what we got. I really like that. But if you see like inconsistencies in here, you can do something like you get your smooth tool. And it takes a while, so we can come over to our inflate a little bit. Alright, and I have. Oh. I have the uh, smooth tool as my quick action. If I click that red trigger, since it has a pink tick here, I can smooth that out instead of having to go to my tools and select that. So look how neat that looks. It's a little bit smoother. See, like I don't like how these are. Oh, I'm on fleet. Smooth that out. See how nice that looks? Really cool. So I'll just smooth a little bit more of this out. If I can remember not to use inflate. There we go. Smooth it out in there a little bit. Cool. So we've got a pretty good little base model going here. Look at that. Pretty cool guy. I think so. All right. So, for color, there's a lot of ways you can do it. Like, a lot of guys do it in steps, like I did with the eye here. Like, I selected it before I did it, which adds a good base color. I kind of like this guy being white because I worked on this before just to kind of see what kind of design I like to do. Let's go to paint here. I'll pull up a color and everything's symmetrical that's why I like keeping it in mirror mode because I can literally just work on half an image instead of doing the entire thing and then at the end you can turn it off and do minor details and changes to give it like more realism I guess but all right let's see let's go with like a dark I want like a brownish green let's go with that okay all right let's make it bigger so I can cover more ground I'm just going to cover this entire thing here. And normally this isn't as blocky, but I'm also recording, so I've got some other background tasks going on, so it's a little sketchy right now, but it's okay. Oh yeah, look at that. It's good stuff. Let's see, get under there. 
It's looking pretty good. See, this would have been a lot easier if I had done it in this color, but that's okay. I was just trying to show you the different tools anyways. So we see you're getting pretty close. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. All right. So I like, I can get in here. That's the cool thing about VR. So now I can just scale this down and And I already know it's not marking that other eye because I did it all in mirror mode. So my character is painting exactly like it is over here. I'm not hitting the eye. I'm not going to do anything like that. Okay, so let's see. It's exactly the same. See, it even missed the little spot above here. So I had it at a weird angle. Okay, let's do some minor detailing. I'm trying to go a little quick here. Yes, I'm hitting the black, that's okay. I'm gonna get it off in just a second. So I'll go back to black. to be perfect because I'm also learning here so okay so I'm gonna fix the color that I screwed up by selecting this eyedropper tool and now that I selected it I have that green again Here. And I forget I can go into the model. I like get scared of it, but that's why I was also screwing up a lot. Because I can literally come in like this and through, and you can see you can get different angles. But for right now, darn, I got that eye again. Or did I mess up? That's what we're going to go with for now. And I'll fix that one little guy right there. Cool. All right. So now we have a green dude. So that's cool. And you can also play with settings, like say if I wanted like red tips on him. You can bring your opacity down. So if I can make my brush bigger, which I can. So I marked it just a slight bit. Hey, I reward. We got new items. Cool. So now it's a little too big. There you go. A 
Look at that. That's a cool little alien guy. I don't know his name yet, but we'll figure that out. All right, so there you have it. That's medium in a nutshell. But we have all kinds of other cool features. So if I come down here, I can turn mirror mode off, you know, and I'm back in the normal thing. What I also like is this lathe feature. You can select to put your item on a lathe like you would in, like, say, a woodworking shop. Um, I mean, it creates all kinds of different things. I'm not going to mess with this character but I'll create something new so I just hover above here I mean just weird stuff I mean really cool and then I like to add stuff to my characters this way I mean and turn it back off. Oh, look at that. We got this weird circly stuff. And then I'll undo with that button there. We come back. And there's grid snap, which just makes your items, instead of being smooth like that, they, they'll like pop between a grid that it creates. Angle snap is really similar to that as well. Uh, let's see. Alright, and that is pretty much Blender. There's a lot more you can do, but this is just a cool little creature I made. I thought y'all might like him. Um, yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed. Oh, another cool thing is you can bring it huge. So now I can see him in, like, real size. If I thought he was going to be a big guy, he'd be there. Um, yeah, so we can also come in here. I take my light source. And we can move our light around. So you can create different, like, lighting effects, scenes. Like, if I wanted a real dramatic, I can put it right here. I want it to be dark and gloomy. I can totally take it away from him, but I mean, it really adds something to it. I like to put it right above, right here, almost like at a 50, 60 degree angle on them. <laughs> yeah, I think that those look cool. You have cameras that are set. All these are all transferable over to Blender, and they're like they work in a parent scheme, so like a hierarchy, like. This is a parent, this is a child to this parent. These are all children to this, who's a child to this. So on and so forth. So they affect each other, but you can... Once you figure it out, you can manipulate the system and make it work pretty good. Um, so let's see, what else do I have? Hmm. Let's go to scene grab. Let's click layer one. See, we can change the kind of structures on it. So this is like a material metal. I can make it diffuse a little less light. So I give them kind of like a metalist feeling. There's the emissive, which is like uh, like translucent almost. We'll just go with default for right now, and you can load other ones. We'll bring the occlusion down, but I don't want to mess with that right now. So here's another big thing. So when you saw it was working and it was ticking, so it all goes by poly count, right, and resolution. So right now I have a, a pretty decent higher end resolution. I usually go higher than this on the standard, but since I'm recording, it's a little harder. So if your system ever chugs, you can decrease the resolution. So it won't take as long to decrease, but you'll see. Tick, 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 tick. Oh. All right, bada bing, bada boom. Our resolution has decreased, so. I don't like that.
Where'd he go? There he is. Okay. Alright. We got our guy here. Let's bring him down. Make him a little smaller. So I select this layer again. He's still at a, a pretty good poly count. But uh, you'll be able to see these textures when you really get in here. You can kind of start to see them like... I mean, they're pretty smooth. I still have it high. Let me just decrease it a bunch. I mean, this is obviously faster if you're using platform over there, but if you start where you're comfortable with and it's kind of an easy workflow, it's not a big deal. So, okay. So we can see it's getting a little rougher on those textures, but it makes it easier to work with. So I'm going to increase it back up to where I had it. And that pretty much concludes the tutorial. I don't have a lot else to show you. I think this is a good basis for anyone to pick this up and get their hands wet. It's free to anybody with a Oculus headset. Um, some other headsets aren't supported by Oculus, but there's third-party programs you can download to get to like backdoors and access it. The controls might be different because you don't have the same hand controllers, but Either way, you'll be able to figure it out. This kind of gives you the the run through of it so that you can learn and experience VR 3D creation. All of these files are also transferable to Blender. Again, I think I mentioned it before, but I can just save it since I'm on my PC. It'll automatically save over to my PC and um, I can pull that over to Blender and start working on it any way that I would like.